Hello and welcome to the Build with Bear Workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm here to build a model kit and to hang out with all of you. And I'm going to finish up a model kit, then I'm going to start a different model kit. What? It's true. Uh, I'm going to throw the Bear Cave Lego, the Scythe Emote in the chat. If you're currently a subscriber, you can throw those emotes right back at me. Harold, thank you for hosting the stream. I appreciate it very much. Uh, this is the intro portion where we wait to see if a few more folks want to join us before we get into the building. Because I don't want to start with the building. And people are like, oh no, I missed it. Uh, Lashbrook is here. Aristophan is here. Welcome, welcome. Happy to have you all here. Um, tonight, we are finishing up the Marcosia uh, high grade. The Marcosia is from Erd, uh, which is a mobile video game uh, as part of the license uh, of uh, the Iron Blood Orphans series. So it's, it's not from the Iron Blooded Season 1 or 2 or the manga even. It's from a mobile video game. Lord Crashington is here. Hi, Lord Crashington. Welcome, welcome. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna finish this up now. Um, if you were Julie's here, hi Julie. If you uh, saw my stream on Thursday, you may remember that this arm was falling off quite a bit, um, and I have fixed that issue. We will not run into that tonight. Um, uh, yes, I, I went ahead and made sure that is not going to happen by using some blue tack. So you actually might see a little bit of blue as I'm moving this kit around. I put blue tack in on both of the arms. Uh, I got a little bit right here. Just a little bit of extra blue tack in case I need it. Uh, it is really good for uh, for that. Uh, it, it does see through because I probably used too much, but this arm just did not want to stay on. As soon as I moved it, it would just pop out, uh, which is a, a bummer. Uh, and, uh, you know, happens now and again. And it will definitely be more likely to happen because we are going to put side skirts on here that can fold out to contain swords because this kit comes with swords, like long swords and short swords, and a sword that goes into a hammer, which is a very fun part of uh, of the Iron Blood Orphans kits. Um, and then we're going to we're gonna switch over, and we got a lot of water transfer for decals to do, and we'll get to some of those tonight, probably, because we're doing uh, the Star Trek Enterprise NX-01. Uh, and I'll talk more about that as we get there. Uh, that kit was bought, uh, thank you to Air, who bought that off my Amazon wish list. I appreciate that very much, so it jumped the, it jumped the queue. I also got a few new things in that I purchased myself uh, for future build streams. Uh, and yeah, so now I have a couple high grades and a master grade and a, a Lego set waiting because it's been a hot minute since we did a Lego set. But anyway, I'm going to retweet my tweet and we're going to get into building because a bunch of fun people are here, which is always nice. Uh, and I hope you're all doing well here on a, a fine Saturday evening. Move my mouse out of the way. Let's get this kit laid out. As you can see, it's right here. It is basically body complete, but as you can see in the photo, we do have those wings on the uh, coming out of the backpack that do fold out with swords and the side skirts that do fold out to hold swords as well. Uh, sub arms is what they are called, and uh, I'm excited to build some sub arms. We still got some stickers left to apply. We still got a little bit of this kit left to put together. Uh, and the weapons, you know, there's a little short shield. It's a small shield. I usually like my shields big, but whatever. Um, so we, and yeah, and then a big sword, and then we'll be done with this kit. So let's get that together. Uh, as always with these um, uh, these kinds of model kits here, uh, the, what do you call it, uh, uh, doing the Iron Blood Orphans kits, a big prevalence on, like, vicious weapons, uh, brut brutality, uh, not so much just shooting, it's a lot of slicing and crushing in the show, uh, which works very well for what they are trying to accomplish uh, in the show. All right, so let's get this going here. So we'll get these assembled, put them together. Uh, I hope you're all doing well. I am full of Chinese food. I have been trying very hard not to order takeout, but uh, I, I, I just it, it felt like it was something I, I needed to do. So I got myself some boneless barbecued spare ribs tonight, uh, which were very, very good, and some fried rice. Uh, and I got myself a big container of wonton soup, and I only ate half of the, the container, and I saved the rest for lunch tomorrow, which is good because the, um, the noodles were a little undercooked. Uh, the, the, you know, I, I was not thrilled with the noodles. Um, I was pleased enough with uh, the boneless barbecue spare ribs. But yeah, the noodles left a little bit to be desired. So I think tomorrow, reheating it will be great. It's going to do it on the stove, and that should cook them through a little bit more and make them nice and hot. I could do it in the microwave, but since I want to 
I want to kind of cook those noodles up a little bit. I'll do it on there. Um, and I had to get some, of course, crunchy noodles to put on top, which is important for something like that. And overall, it was just like tasty. It just like, I don't know, just something, you know, like something I, I've just been kind of craving for a while. And I felt like, well, you know, I do eventually have to finish up uh, all of uh, the meatloaf. How is the meatloaf and the PB bites? So I still have some more peanut butter bites left. Uh, the, the meatloaf has been fantastic. I had that for lunch yesterday, and I am uh, uh, going to uh, have it for lunch probably, or dinner tomorrow, and I'm almost done with it. Asmo! Asmo917, subscribe to Tier 1. That is 34 months on a 34-month stream. So let's show the Bearcade Living in the chat. And thank Asmo, who says, eager to see the NX01 when this kid is wrapped up. I'm uh, I'm excited to start it. Um, We'll talk more about it as we get there. Uh, the thing really is, when it comes to, <coughs> and again, thank you very much for renewing your subscription. It uh, always means a lot. Um, uh, we're going to wait until we finish this thing before we do panel lining because we have to put a big sticker on it. So since we got to put a big sticker on it anyway, um, or on the other part, we're just going to wait on that. Uh, and we'll we'll do all of it at once when we're, when we're ready to go. Um so here's the thing about Polar Lights Kits, the, the company that makes these. Um, while it is uh, snap kits, they're not glue kits, uh, these kits are very similar to a uh, the kind of kits that you would get um, that, that are more like glue kits in that they require, to make them awesome, paint. Which, ooh, are actually, sorry, i got to fix this right quick. I did not turn off autofocus on my overhead camera, and so I need to do that right now. I apologize. I usually remember to do it. Uh, unfortunately, I have to be all or nothing because it's the same exact model of camera, so I want autofocus on this camera, but I don't want it on this camera, and I have to do it every single stream because setting one on and one off for some reason doesn't stick. Uh, so I have to manually do it every time, and it's annoying. But anyway... Hey, Bobby, welcome, welcome. Um, what was I saying? I was saying something about... Oh, yeah, so the, the Polar Lights kits, they want paint. It's not going to look silvery. Like, I'll show you the photo here. We're not getting this silver. This silver, we're not going to get. So we're going to construct it, and then we're going to do all of, uh, or a lot of, the um, uh, uh, water slides. We're going to do all the water slides on it. But it's still not going to just look, it's not going to look perfect because we can't make it look perfect. Uh, what do I need here? I need B1, 2. Okay. Um, we can't make it look perfect, even though I would like it to look perfect. Because uh, basically, uh, that would require us to spray paint it silver. And I don't have equipment to do that. So... We're just going to have to build it as is. Uh, and you may remember, folks, that I worked on a Defiant model kit. The same company put the Defiant out, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, I am going to slightly alter my uh, my preparations for, or my, my styling of um, applying water slide decals. Uh, it's very much the same technique, but I saw, I saw some people do it because, you know, I like to watch people do model kit building and assembly online, try to pick up tri tricks, tips and tricks as this, as it goes. So I, I saw somebody who was doing it and they, they did water slides a slightly different from how I do it. So I am going to attempt to uh, kind of emulate theirs. And I didn't practice it because that felt, I should have, I guess, but I would have had to use a stick. Yeah, I just didn't, but we'll try it out. I mean, my method is still fine, the one I used previously, so I'm not terribly worried about it, but I am going to attempt a different style there. But it's going to be a lot of putting decals on. Now, a cool thing about this uh, kit is we're going to do the NX-01 as intended, as show, as, you know, show accurate as best we can, but a season of Enterprise that didn't exist, that doesn't exist because they didn't happen originally there was going to be a refit and it was going to look more like this enterprise was going to look more like the enterprise we know from uh uh the original series 
And so that includes parts for that. So if you wanted to, you could do that. Also, we could, if we wanted to, use panel uh, or use uh, some of the uh, water slide decals to make it look like various other versions of it, like other world versions of the ship. We're not going to do that. We're going to go traditional and original. But I like that they include all that. That's fucking neat. Uh, because a few cans of silver spray paint and a neighbor with open garage door to take over, what other equipment would you need besides that? Um, uh, so I so here's the thing. If I was going to do this on my own, uh, yeah, then I would get some, some spray paint. I would have gloves. I would put on a mask. Uh, I would go out and do it. Um, I would set up a station. Basically, the real the real easy thing is to do proper spray painting. All you really need is a cardboard box that you cut off one side of to put the thing in, uh, so that it can so that you can put it on whatever a work surface. Uh, because w what I recommend against, uh, I strongly recommend against the idea of because some people do this of just like I don't know, you just stick it on a a thing you don't care about outside and just hit it with some paint. You do want to enclose it a little bit because, especially if you're doing it in, um, if you if you're doing it outside, then you're at the nat the mercy of nature, and I, I I strongly disagree being at the mercy of nature. I would much rather be uh, uh, be have as much control as possible. Okay, so this is sticker eleven, and we're gonna put that on. Okay, so this sticker is gonna go on here, kind of cover that line up with that and then fold over so we'll get this uh try to get this as right as possible um so yeah i, I like doing a, the cardboard box technique uh quick little sprays obviously have a respirator or at least a mask on uh controlled sprays pretty close to it uh it's just not a thing i can do here in in the house so um uh, it, it's not something that I would do. Uh, maybe it would be something that I would do in the future on my own in a video where I can do some before and afters, but uh, it's not something I would do on a stream. That is just not something that I'm currently interested in doing. Uh, okay, well, one of these looks good and the other one doesn't, so that's a shame. Let's see if we can... We're going to get our knife in here. Uh, this is one big sticker, which sucks. These big stickers that have to fold and bend, oh, and you know, and kind of get get a fold going, can look pretty terrible. Yeah, that looks very terrible. All right, let's see if we can get this sticker up and kind of redo it a little bit. Uh, we're gonna try to. Oh, we I it did it did cut there, which sucks. But I'm just gonna try to go underneath it and lift it a little bit to try to get this lined up a little better. We did get a rip in it, but it shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, this is just never gonna. This is just never gonna uh, look good because it. Yeah, but I want to be careful as I'm lifting this uh, that I don't rip it apart as I'm attempting to make this fold look good. It looks okay on one side; it just doesn't look right on the other side. So I'm just gonna have to live with it and be okay with it but you're going to get a little bit of, you can see the pink underneath there. Uh, we'll try to get the other one. We'll try to nail the other one. Uh, but we can now put this together with, with more piece, and then we will uh, assemble our uh, one more piece on there, and then we will do some panel lining on this thing before we attach it. Um, but yeah, I just, um, I don't know. I, I, I'm not much of a spray paint kind of person. That's never been my thing. Uh, I really like doing panel lining. That is the thing that I have uh, uh, immediately been like, ooh, this is the thing I wish I'd done sooner. So maybe I could get into it. Also, uh, you know, that is a thing that I don't run into as much working in the world of uh, of Gunpla, right? The Bandai kits don't require paint to make them look good. Uh, but that is definitely a thing, as we'll see when we look at this kit. Uh the pay, you know, putting the stickers is going to be good, but it's not going to replace uh, the wonderful world of uh, fucking rad as hell um, uh, paint. Yeah, it's just not it's just not the same. 
Uh, the Defiant, I think, turned out good when we were done with it, but in the moment, I was like, uh, you could also try a silver paint marker. Yes, we could try um, to to really to get a uh, a wide tip marker and and slowly do the whole thing in that. We certainly could do that. Um, that you're not wrong. We could do that. Uh, these fine tips are definitely not going to work for that. Ooh, I'm using black, and I should be using gray. Oh, wait, no. Yes. So we'll try to get that off. I did use the wrong color on here. Got distracted. I'm on my own negligence. So I'm really going to dig dig in with this and try to get this off. It's okay if a little bit, if you don't if you mess it up a little bit. I'm not, it's not the end of the world, but we're going to try to hit this with the gray there. But yeah, um, painting, painting with, uh, with, like, I can even see, like, hey, does my dad have any spray paint out there? Like, I don't think he's going to have the silver, but he might have something. I don't know. Uh, I don't mind doing, uh, like, I wouldn't mind doing another car kit. You know, we did two from, uh, 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 my brain is like a little slow today. Um, in the past we have done, uh, two cars that include, that required, uh, glue, uh, or liquid cement really, um, from initial D. That's what I was trying to think of. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. Um, and that I wouldn't mind doing another one of those. I think those those are stressful, but I think the end result was pretty fucking rad. And it won, you know, it did want a little paint, but the water transfers I think look good. That's because you know it's a car, so that's from the wonderful world of car modeling, which is definitely going to be different from your Bandai and other companies' kind of snap model kit designs. All right, so we're just going to hit this with, with some marker, try to make it look good where we can make it look good. And we'll hit the, we'll hit uh, this one piece here with the black in just a minute. And we're just going to go through and hit all the important parts, and we will clean it all up. Oh, and then we're going to open this up to make sure that we need to hit any more of it because, boom, it kind of pops out here and pops out there, and then this pops out, and you can put a sword there, which is pretty neat. Uh, hey, Pat, how was your D&D &D session today? It was real fun. Thank you for asking. Uh, okay, yeah, so we're good there. We're good there. We're good there. Yeah, all right, let's get this cleaned up and we're in there. Yes, thank you very much for asking. I am a, currently in a D&D uh, &D crew. Uh, we play for fun. Uh, it is really, really a good time. Lots of awesome people involved. Uh, our Saturday crew, we're really having a good time with it. Uh it is lovely weather here in South Carolina. So I was outside uh, uh, on my porch. It's screened in, had the laptop out there, had my iPad mini uh, as, as like my command center. I took a photo of that. It's on my Twitter if you're interested. Uh, and that was that was very fun and silly to do, but I had a good time doing it. I think I didn't hit these little ones here, so we're going to hit those with just a little bit of ink. Um... But yeah, it was really, really fun time. Very silly. Uh, it's, we're all basically comedians. Um, one of us person to stand up. The rest of us are all improvisers, or at, at the least, and also stand ups in, in some cases as well. Uh, and yeah, just a cool, chill group. Uh, I think there's something a little sad about having to preface. I'm in a DD group with we play for fun. Well, so Bobby, I mentioned this because um, I monetize all my hobbies. And it's not necessarily that weird for me. It wouldn't be weird for me to say, yeah, I'm in a D&D &D group. You can find us at youtube.com slash whatever. Or you can find us on Twitter. We, you know, we do it, you know, to tape. We're, on, we're a YouTube group. Like, I monetize all of my other hobbies. So I honestly, literally have anime that that in my life that is just for me, that I only talk about at the, like, my wrap-ups, that I don't talk about week to week. Uh, you know, because I, I want to, like, tweet about them. Like, non non Birion, uh, Biroi, I should say. Uh, I don't talk about that show. It's beautiful. It's kind of for me, although I'll tweet about it. But, like, I don't cover it week to week because it's, like, a silly slice of life that I love very much. But I talk about anime so much that I'm like, eh, I think I'm just going to keep this one for, for Pat. Um, all right. Uh... All right, so this can go on here, so put that on there. Um, but I think that's important to have those kind of things. And so, uh, like, I will never stream myself playing DDR. DDR is for me. 
Uh, also, at the same time, uh, you won't find me uh, streaming. Um, uh, uh, oh, Hitman Three or any Hitman. That's for me. I'll talk about them on stream. I'm happy to chat about those things, but I have decided that though that that part that hobby that part of video games like oh no these are video games that I play on my own time I don't know I think it's important um hopefully it continues to to you know to have a few things that I can like and enjoy just for myself I am not saying that D and D is ever uh, that's just me wishful thinking of the days where people had just hobbies that weren't also part of their daily grind if that makes sense no I understand yeah like. But also, it wouldn't be weird if I had a D and D crew that I was promoting that you could watch our our let's plays because or our live plays because like they're fun. So and like you know I, I'm and I'm also in a group with a bunch of comedians. So like I could see us wanting to to put content out there. Now we can't because one of our members we already don't want to. But also one of our members can't do anything uh, like that. Uh, she is just not able to uh, put uh, any kind of content out on the internet because of her job, which is great for us because it gives us a built-in reason not to do it or be tempted to do it. Uh, so, but yeah, also, like I said, there could be another group that comes along someday and I'm like, well, I joined, I made this thing and now we, we do content and that's our thing. Uh, I remember when GB tried to do Pathfinder only got one or two sessions in. I mean, it's a lot like it's a commitment, right? It's a, it's a big commitment to do things like that. I mean, I totally watch if you did. Uh, is this the campaign where you're running the Echo Knight? Yes, I am running the Echo Knight. My uh, uh, my lo my lovely friend who is uh, I, you know, I don't go too much into it, but uh, the premise uh, of it is that he is uh mad every time his Echo shows up. He is it. It's we're still trying to figure out like. He, do, he just, like, is gruff about it. Like, he just doesn't think he needs the help. So he is often very frustrated when this thing shows up. Because it's just like, I got I don't need this. I got this. Come on, get out of here. And it's just a fun, to me, that's just a fun way of doing it. Because I can play angry without being angry at my other players or their characters, I should say. So I am not angry at other characters. Uh, my character is just angry that someone that looks like him keeps showing up to help. And he's just like, I, I don't need your help. I got it. What are you doing? It's fun. Uh, overall, it's just a fun time, and I'm enjoying it. But yeah, I mean, like, I like having some things that are for me. Uh, like, I'm not talking week to week about um, uh, uh, ReZero. I don't talk about ReZero on these streams, because I got caught up and I'm just kind of watching it for me. But I am on a Discord, and one and one and the anime. They literally renamed the anime subgroup to ReZero because myself and three other people won't shut up about ReZero, so they just are temporarily calling it the ReZero channel. Because uh, like occasionally people talk about other stuff, and we do talk about other things, but we're all so invested in sharing our thoughts because none of us have read the light novels or the manga. We've only been watching the anime. So we're just like, <gasps> is that why he talks like he does? That's why he says he says he does that kind of like, no, nah, at the end, his sing-songy weird. That's where it comes from. Wait, that guy was important. What? Like we're, we're freaking out and nerding out about a show and it's beautiful. I love that I get the opportunity to, to nerd out about this show with people. Um, and like, you know, at the end of this season, when I, um, when I am done, you know, when the, the season is done, I will talk about it when I do my wrap up and say like, Hey, these are the things I liked. These are the things I didn't like. Um, and, but it's kind of cool not to, to have one thing that I don't talk about all the damn time. Um, people running anime campa campaigns. Uh, Pat, I have to assume there are anime D&D. &D. Yeah, I mean, so like, I mean, there's probably, people run their own kind of, you know, various forms of, of campaigns. So I'm sure people have adapted certain anime to, 
uh, to D and D stories or set D and D uh, like modules, like uh, campaign modules in fantasy worlds uh, that happen to be very close but legally distinct. But yeah, I mean, like, look, you could easily see a three man uh, group with a with with a leader. Uh, in the world of Naruto, ship, especially Shippuden, like running ninja missions, right? Like you could easily be characters either in that or because there's a Naruto tabletop game. I don't know anything about it. I just know it exists. Um, but I could definitely see like that being a thing that people will like, yeah, just like, yeah, you're just running a quest. It happens just to be in the world of, of Naruto. Um uh, Lord Grass, let me tell you about a thing called Friends at the Table and their anime-ass role-playing. I mean, that's you're not wrong. Imagine if someone tries to run a campaign uh, spanning the length of Dragon Ball. Uh, and there are a lot of other RPG rule sets uh, that might uh, fit certain anime settings better than... Yeah, than D&D. Certainly, you're not wrong. Yeah, I'm thinking of the adventuring series, but like, I mean, Fiasco, you could set Fiasco in any anime uh, if you wanted to. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if there are some D and D style or, you know, or lasers and feelings or, or, or other, uh, styles of, uh, of them that, uh, fit the isekai mold, you know, a group, a group isekai wake up in a strange world, but certainly you have to learn your abilities, but you have all the knowledge you have of the world you're from. Like I could see that being an easy way to have like characters, not like, have to discover stuff, but not be clueless about, you know, their, but like through the guise of knowing their own world uh, and figuring that stuff out. Uh, all right. So we'll put that on there and we will, uh, we'll do some panel lining. Let's start with the black. That's the, the least amount we have to do. Just, just this here. I don't think we could do any other here. Yeah, we could just do around in there a little bit around that connector. All right, and then we'll do the rest of this in gray and then we'll get these sides on. They don't fit well on here, so getting my photo look, looking right might be tough, but we'll get them on uh, the gray. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, I could totally see some very cool uh, um, campaigns set in anime settings, either like-minded settings or just Whatever. Uh, I bet also there are probably modules out there that people made for D&D because people do f their own modules out there and sell them on like Kickstarter and stuff like that. And I bet there's some that are legally distinct from your favorite anime out there. Just people making people making what they want to see in the world themselves. Uh, but yeah, I could, I could see that working out pretty cool. Just, you know, playing some minor characters in a very established world like the world of Dragon Ball or something. You can see that. The hunt for the Dragon Balls is a pretty easy, like, hey, we're going to this city where we hear there's a Dragon Ball. And then stuff happens. Pretty easy to set that. Uh, Gundam D&D? &D? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's not uh, a, a Friends of the Table dig. I've been patron there since day one. Yeah, no. No, uh, I understood, Asmo, that you were not uh, you were not doing a dig. Uh, also, hi, Zeno. Uh, um, Fiasco is great for stuff like that. Totally, yeah. Um, uh, you know, some rules light games, you know, are, are pretty fun, uh, especially for the idea of doing something in a setting that everyone can agree they're excited about. Um, but yeah, no, Friends of the Table, like, is in, I mean, it, it, the people that run it are inspired by the things they're inspired by, which also includes anime. So you're going to see some anime ass stories in there for sure. Uh, a hundred percent. All right, I think we got all of the stuff we have to panel line on that. It's looking pretty good. And now we can... Oh, there, just got to do this here. And now we can clean this up. We'll just hit this with an eraser. But yeah, uh, sometimes you'll try to steal a Dragon Ball. Sometimes you're trying to steal the New Year's Eve ball. It works. Oh, it works in Fiasco. Indeed. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, it, it, you know, I do like Fiasco because I often play with improvisers and and comedian and comedy folks and actors and so fiasco works fine i've had some people really 
need I, I've had friends who really need structure. Like their big thing was like Vampire the Masquerade. That was their big uh favorite uh thing because they are uh, or other white wolves because they really wanted like backstory and structure and game mechanics and they wanted the freedom within them but they really needed to set their own rules or have the rules be in there uh and like you know i, I get that i i can play both ways uh with with that both 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 uh strategies in my opinion are valid ones and i'm cool with it i just happen to personally really enjoy freedom uh because i i like Going, going out, uh, setting my, my mind to like, okay, well, I want to do this thing. How do I make that happen? Like, I'm much more interested in that. Um, I've talked about this before. The uh, rules light uh, group that I was in uh, bef that actually became this D&D group because some of the people that had missed it did a one-off that now became the group. But we were a group that uh, we were doing this kind of like thing based on the mask, uh, not the movie The Mask, the television cartoon mask. Uh, and basically it was just like uh, a bunch of freelance, you know, heroes for hire. And you you could mention stories that you had been in if people in the group hadn't been in those adventures. And there were a couple DMs uh, or GMs running the games. And it would just be like one-off scenarios that you, the team got put together to to finish that scenario and it was really fun and really easy and like yeah you get to the thing of like well i haven't my character hasn't played with this other character before but we both have been doing this because we're just like whoever's around and we get with somebody that wants to run it and then we would like figure you know do some stuff and then somebody would be like this reminds me of this thing and like kind of like fill in the other person about what had happened before and it was like very casual and very fun uh and and that was really fun to do because it just like gave us an excuse to mess around and and not feel a lot of pressure which i think is a it can be a real bummer for some people a lot of people feel a lot of pressure to be creative or or really expressive or to win and uh you know look i want to win I want to defeat the dragon. If there's a drag, look. If, if there's a dragon, I would like to defeat that dragon. Like that's not. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But also, I understand that sometimes losing to that dragon in a very cool way can be also rewarding. Uh, I mean, like I said, I don't want to lose, but sometimes you do lose. Uh, and sometimes that dragon is your friend, right? Yes. Sometimes that dra Yes. Oh, well, sometimes, yeah, you're just like, sometimes you've got a member of your crew that has information, that has like, can roll something to get information. Uh, and then the, and then like find out the weak point. I, I had this in a game once where, uh, they, they used observation, they figured out something and then they were like, they literally, we literally were just like, hey, you know we have the same goal, right? And and then the big monster was like, what? And we're like, yeah, we have the exact same goal. You're not working for the guy we're here to kill. You want to kill him too. And then he's like, what? You don't work for that guy? Turns out, big misunderstanding, which we could have defeated him or he could have defeated us, but instead, he joined our party as an NPC. And we had a giant, cool monster oh, ro running around with us who was, like, trying to protect his family from this evil, like, uh, basically, basically end up being, like, an eco-terrorist, like, uh, guy. Uh, that we were, like, he basically, yeah, we had an eco-terrorist join our party. Uh, who was just like, oh, yeah, I'll help you out. Cool. It was basically like Swamp Thing. Like, basically, we had a Swamp Thing, like, join our squad. Uh, and it was just like, oh, this is way cooler. Um, so it says you got a Vegeta, that dragon. <laughs> yes. Uh, the best role-playing advice I ever got inadvertently was listening to someone work out how to react to a role and saying, well, my character doesn't know he rolled a one. It's a simple but often overlooked thing. Oh, yeah, I like that. Yeah, sometimes you don't know, I'm about to fail. But my character doesn't know that, so he's gonna, they're going to do this thing. And then we'll see what happens with there. 
yeah, that can, you know, sometimes that's all you need. Also, um, my opinion, purely my opinion, uh, some uh, uh, GMs or DMs, uh, you know, some, some of your game masters, want to be fiction writers. They don't want to be masters of the game. Uh, and it's okay to tell somebody, not in the moment, after the fact, before the next one, hey... Like, this might not be your thing. Uh, because some people have a story they want to tell, and you are along for the ride, and I am not all, I am not about that at all. No, I am not, I am not along for the ride. I am here to pick a destination. So, look, I can understand, you know, when you're, when you're just going in a wild direction, and somebody's just like, well, there's just, you just skipped the town. Well, you just skipped a town. I wrote a whole thing about it in the town, and I'm like, cool. Well, take your favorite things from that from that uh, story, and then put them in the next thing that we're about to do. Take the take the NPCs, move them to the next town we'll visit. Like, it sucks. I get it, but also write some fiction if that's if that's what you need to do, because. That's not why I'm here. I'm here to roll some dice and make some decisions and play out whatever character I want to play out and have a good time. And everybody else is here for that too. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I like I like GMs who roll with punches and figure things out and figure out ways to get what they want. And then also like, that are just like, well... If I don't change what's going to happen here, y'all are going to die, and then we're done, and I don't want that. Like, I really respect people who are just like, well, let's figure out um, some kind of MacGuffin or something to fix this, because the alternative is just we don't get to do this anymore, and I don't like that. So, I, I always appreciate that. James are like, okay, well, let's figure out what else we can do here. All right, um, we'll get the last parts of this built, and we're going to do uh, panel lining all at the end here. And I just have to remember to open this up to make sure that I've gotten all the parts I want to get because these do pop open. So I can hit some lines uh, that are covered, but we'll just get this finished uh, here. Uh, these are our shoulder wings, their backpack wings, uh, that will also be able to hold swords. Because this thing fucking rules and does that. Although I don't think it, I, from what I understand, it doesn't do it super well. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, uh, having fun playing D and D has been a, uh, been a nice thing for me. That was a good thing today. Uh, got to play it on the patio, which is great. I went for a walk this afternoon, uh, uh, which was really nice. Good for the head. Just move around. The weather has been gorgeous. I like opened the windows today. Uh, which was really nice, just like really relaxing to be able to do. Uh, all right, so let's see which one goes. This goes like this, okay. But yeah, it has been relaxing. Uh, it was a relaxing Saturday. I did shoot a video. Uh, my $5 and $10 patrons will be able to see it tomorrow, which is neat. Um, and uh, and then everyone else will see it on Monday. But yeah, I shot a video. Oh, I guess I'll talk about this. I can talk about this now. Um, I don't have a uh, command for it in uh, uh, chat, but uh, youtube.com slash Pat Bear. I'll add it to the, the notes eventually, and it'll show up as I'll eventually show up as command. But I didn't do it. Um, you can now subscribe. Or, well, you can always subscribe, and subscribing is free. But now you can join. I wonder if they regret making subscribe the free thing back in the day when, when they created it. But yes, um, I now have YouTube memberships. It's $2 a month. I don't expect anyone to do it, but I like having an alternative to Patreon because and, and Twitch because they're both not great. Um, so I put that in there. Uh, like I said, it's $2 a month. Uh, you get... Uh, uh, 
one uh, one video a week ahead of time. Basically, every Tuesday, you'll get what's supposed to be my Wednesday video uh, as a link. It'll be in the community tab. Uh, and that is all I can offer right now. Um, no, Lord Crashington, I did not see the Jonah Hill thing. I do not know what you're talking about. Uh, if it happened before 9, before 9 p.m., I just missed it. If it happened after 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, I've been doing this. So, uh, I do not know what that is. Uh, so yeah, cannot comment about the Jonah Hill thing. I hope it's not negative, but also I don't know him. So, okay. All right. So put this there. This goes, got to look at this again. Cause I got to do this right. But yeah, uh, I have YouTube memberships. You could join my YouTube uh, for $2 a month and you get a video early. And I'll probably also like talk about upcoming video stuff and maybe do polls. I don't know. Uh, I'm eligible for it, so I did it. Because like, like I said, uh, having outside revenue sources, because Patreon, I am very afraid of what's going to happen with Patreon once this... Um, uh, uh, once they switch from pay at the first of the month to you can just pay whenever uh, or whatever, like the, the anniversary of when you signed up, suddenly you pay. Uh, I'm really afraid that's going to be people just being like, OK, I'm done. Uh, I just don't know. Uh, the Daily Mail got Papa Zarazzi shots of him at the beach without a shirt on as if to shame him. So he ripped them a new one talking about he couldn't have love, couldn't love his own body until recently. Okay, yeah, no, that didn't didn't hit my radar. I mean, that's what the Daily Ma the Daily Mail is there to shame people, yes, to sell papers to be like, look at this guy. I'm glad that he is open to talk about it, but also, yeah, Daily Mail's got a Daily Mail, gonna be assholes about it about everything. Good for him. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, so we'll hit these with black a little bit here, and then we'll get clean that up. But yeah, that that sucks. Do, 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 do. There. Uh happy 25th anniversary to Pokemon. Uh, I didn't get a kit specifically for it to be that. I thought about I thought about that too late. And did not order one in time to have a Pokemon kit to do today. Uh, and I should, should, and I would like to get better at that. I would like to get better at, remember, like, paying attention to pop culture events. And then being like, and then I'm doing this thing that is related to that. Because that's just good business. But I didn't do that. I have Pokemon built. It's got, um... Did the Mega Constructs Mew versus Mew 2? Did the Pokemon, uh, the Bandai uh, Mew 2 build? I've done a Pikachu build that took no time at all. So I've done some Pokemon. I've done m many Mega Constructs Pokemon kits. So I've done that. I just haven't, didn't do it today. Uh, but then I would have postponed uh, the kit that Air bought. So that would have been a bummer. All right, we are almost done with this kit. We got to build some weapons and finish this backpack. Uh, we will take a pause for the cause in like 10 minutes or so. Talk about ways you can support the channel. But I did want to at least mention the whole YouTube thing because it's new and why not? Uh, let's see. And it was wild seeing that video and seeing all the weird gimmicks that ever come over here. Like the cell phone cable link for the Game Boy Color or the e-reader sequel. Yes, the sequel to the e-reader. Yes, totally. Yeah, that is definitely not a thing we got. Basically, a good message of him about body positivity, Lord Christian is saying, uh, about Jonah Hill, uh, uh, and loving oneself, even if you're not in shape. Yeah, you set your shape. And there are plenty of people who have very envious bodies that we would like to have who don't like themselves particularly too well. It doesn't suddenly make things better or never has or has never been a part of their story. Uh so yeah. Um, yeah, I, I was happy about the whole nin, 
the the Pokemon thing. It was nice. Nice for the anniversary. Also made me feel old, but of course, you know, lots of that stuff does. Just thinking about like how like the fact that Sarah, my friend Sarah, has been Ash longer than the original voice actress for uh for uh Ash by like five years or something I think I can't remember the exact number but she's now done it longer than the original act voice actress when it left WB and went to Cartoon Network uh and now you know stuff's going on Netflix uh but yeah she's done it longer now and that's wild to think about uh I'm fine with my shape as long as I never hacked the voicemail of a missing murdered girl but you know you do you daily mail yeah 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 you do you Indeed. Indeed. Um, but yeah. Yeah, Sarah's done it for a really long time, and it's impressive and awesome. All right, so we'll hit this here. Weird to think about. All right. Longer than the, yeah, if I remember correctly, uh, I mean, I'm going to look up Sarah, let me just check Sarah's, I thought I read that today, uh, I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure, uh, yeah, no, she's been doing 15 to 25, yep, Sarah Natacheni has been the English voice actress for uh, Ash for 15 years out of 25. So she has been doing the voice longer than the voice actress whose name escapes me. And I apologize who did it when Pokemon, the, the Pokemon de, uh, debuted by many years because it's been out longer in Japan than the U S but yeah, Sarah's been doing it for 15 years, which is just wild to think about. But yeah, she took over when it basically when the rights changed to the U.S. dub and it, and it came over to Cartoon Network from the WB. Uh, yeah, because I don't think it was the CW at that point. But yeah, when it moved over, she took over the role of Ash Ketchum. And she's done a bunch of like Pokemon as well, but she's mostly... Mostly known for that. And some background characters here and there. But yeah. Yeah, she's been doing it for a real long time. And for many people, I'm sure that's who you that's who you associate. You associate that Ash more than the other voice actress who's done a bunch of stuff. But whose name, as I said, I do forget. All right. Well, this is a lot of panels to put on here. So we'll hit some hit with all this. We're going to hit all this here. I got to get the blackout again. I forgot that, but we'll do that next. Almost done with this. Then we just got to build a few weapons, put it all together, and then we'll be done with this kit. And then we will start the Enterprise NX-1. And uh, it, that will not be hard to put together. I mean, some tiny pieces we got to put in. Tiny clear pieces. Uh, of the, you know, got to put in the nacelles and stuff. But it's not that hard to do. All right. Uh, I'm weirded out by seeing the evolution of Ash where he looks like he was... He has whiskers on his cheeks. Oh, yeah, as he gets older sometimes. And then I I think it was such a weird choice to uh, the, the sun moon choice they made where they almost rebooted the entire world and then didn't. They rebooted it, but then also kept all the old history. And it's such a bizarre choice. It's so weird. It's so weird, folks. They're just like Ash is young and going back to school in, in the uh, Alola region. And that lets us do all this other stuff and we can like make him look younger and really change the art style up and like de-age him uh, and we'll do that. But also all his history with Misty and Brock exists and continues and Tracy and all the other people, all of that is canon and happened, but also he's young and back in school or in school for the first time. And it's just like, uh, you did both? You could just do both. It's like, yep, we did both. It's like, 
Okay. Fuck. So weird. Uh, it's wild. Uh, oh, uh, it reminds me of the CPC video I saw where the new voice of Bugs Bunny uh, talk about shoes to fill. Yes, totally. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot. That is a, a Canadian gentleman. Um, uh, it's wild how long that show has been on and he didn't win the Pokemon League until recently, right? Yes. For, you know, well, he'd always come and like, you know, lose in the semifinals and learn an important lesson and feel great about his Pokemon. And, and somebody would evolve and it'd be cool. But, you know, there's always going to be better people out there. It's what you do when, when you lose. That, that's a bigger story. But yeah, he finally won a big thing. Uh, he regenerated. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. I mean, it's like, it's a thing of like, it's just, it's just such a weird choice. Like they had it, they had, they were doing the reboot and then they were like, but no, he's still, every, everything that happened still happened. That's wild. All right. Uh, um, Sarah Nadachenis, uh, who is the voice actress of Ash, has a, uh, she has some, some video stuff she did for like the New Yorker, where she does some of her line reads, um, like recordings, because they're doing obviously all uh, home recordings. So it's like her like getting the timing right because, uh, she has to like nail it uh, to like the the mouth movement uh, and like get the get the lines in and it's it's pretty interesting and they have to do it pretty fast. Pokemon not as fast as some other shows, but they still have to do it pretty quickly. The turnaround time is pretty short, so I don't know. That's worth checking out, I would say. Pat. Uh, luckily he never ate. Have you tried any fun new foods or drinks, lady? I, I got a new Coca-Cola and coffee thing today, and it's pretty damn good. Bobby, uh, nothing uh, new. I mean, I'm kind of going with my old favorites. Uh, I have been kind of experimenting because I got, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, folks that know, I'm probably, probably knows, I'm, I've been living alone for a month here. So I was kind of like trying out different ways to prepare. I got a lot of frozen chicken. Uh, like frozen chicken breasts, and I could just pull them out there and even cook them, you know, from frozen. They're they're pre-cooked, uh, so they're easy to reheat. And I've been experimenting with, like, different ways to make those taste better. Um, but not really anything new with food or drink, uh, really. Uh, I, I've kind of just been, like, on a budget, making things work. Um, I have been thinking about getting McDonald's sometime before my folks come back, uh, just because it, I wouldn't mind having McDonald's again. Uh, and I know they're not interested. So I'm probably going to order that. Uh, I got Domino's like right away. I think that was like the first weekend. Cause I, there was a wrestling pay-per-view on and I wanted to watch that wrestling pay-per-view. So it made sense for me to, uh, go and do that. All right. Um, we are almost done assembly with this kit. Uh, we just got to build the weapons, but let's get this in here. Weapons are very easy to build and very easy to panel line. Um, and let's panel line this before we uh, complete it because these wings have to go on and it will be in our way. Uh, but we're just going to do, well, we'll do all of it. Why not? We'll do all of it here. Hit this all with gray. I got Domino's hoagie recently. It was way better than I expected. Oh, nice. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I'm, I'm like, I've been kind of really just being like, all right, well, how else do I want to prepare, prepare this chicken? Well, I've got cream of mushrooms. So sometime next week, I'm going to do them in the slow cooker um, and do that uh, in the crock pot with, uh, with some cream of mushroom soup and just kind of i found a recipe for that so i'm going to do that uh you know it, i'm going to do it in barbecue sauce and let it sit and marinate in the barbecue sauce uh i'm going to fry them on a grill pan and uh with breadcrumbs and uh an egg and do do some fried chicken uh like that style but not obviously not in a in, in a that kind of like sizzling chicken but not deep fried because i don't have a fryer um, 
I'm going to roast them. Like, you know, I mean, I've been messing around with that. And I got pork chops as well and doing similar things. Try not to rely on barbecue sauce, but, you know, mixing things up. I should do a butter chicken at some point as well. I've got real butter, so I should do that at some point. But I just haven't. Uh, tomorrow night, I'm going to be KFC Bucket Night at Casa Osmo. Hell yeah, Osmo. That sounds rad. Go for it. Enjoy. I got to tell you, folks, I don't know what's going on here on a Saturday night. Uh, we have been fluctuating on views. We are go- we'll be like 10, 20, 15, 22, 10, 13. And, like, I am happy to have you folks here. I'm very glad you're here. But it has been a- it is odd. It is a thing that I pay attention to. Uh, I am most pay attention to chat. That's the thing, the number one thing outside of, obviously, the kit I'm working on. But I do pay attention to, like, what you're saying and if you're here and hanging out. Um, but it has been oddly distracting to see the numbers wildly fluctuate. I can only assume people are just like cruising around, uh, Twitch tonight, looking for things. And they're just like, is this what I want to do? Nope. Moving on. And to them, I say, stick around friends. It's cool. Which means the next few days will be leftover fried chicken night. Hell yeah. I mean, that's the real thing, right? Uh, it's either meatloaf for lunch or meatloaf for dinner because I didn't freeze any of this damn meatloaf I made. Uh, and then it's it's walk by the fridge and think, do I want to have a couple of uh, peanut butter bites? I do. I'm almost out of peanut butter bites, which is good because uh, there's just too many of them. But I, I'm just like, oh, I should eat more of that meatloaf. I mean, it's good. Leftover meatloaf is the best because, like, you know, throw it, on, throw it on a roll. I got a couple rolls in the freezer. Uh... Uh, put it on, yeah, put it on bread, just put it as, as a main course, throw some cheese on top of it. Uh, when I'm putting it in the microwave or put it in the toaster oven, uh, I got options and all those options are great. Okay, we are now body complete on this. Once I put this on here and all we have to do is build the weapons and then I'll show you this. Whoops. I'll show you it falling apart. That was fun. Uh, that was right on time. I'll show you the sub arms. Once the weapons are done, and then we'll, uh, this is really flim. This kit is, f- hey, I'm going to say, the uh, uh, Hajiraboshi is a kit that is similar to this in color scheme and from the video game. Uh, and while I think this looks better, that's a better kit. This kit, uh, I don't even know if a stand is going to make this kit cool. Like, I don't think I'm going to be able to show off all of the sword stuff with it standing up because this thing wants to fall over. Uh, So we'll just leave it like that for a second. But yeah, this thing does not want to do cool shit. Uh, Which is a shame because it does look cool. Anyway, uh, we got weapons to build and we are going to and and put together and a shield to put together and we are going to do all that. But first... We're going to take a pause for the cause. Uh, and in fact, I'm going to take a moment here. I'm going to hit the B right back, and I'm going to blow my nose. So I'll be back in one second. Let me remember to beat my microphone this time. All right. I am back. I had to blow my nose. Oh, uh, Hello. Welcome. We're going to take a pause for the cause. This is a moment here where I'm going to talk about ways you can support the channel if you would like. You are under no obligation to do so, but these are just ways you can support me if you'd like to, and I would appreciate it very much. Let's first and foremost throw the Bear Cave, the Lego, the Site, the Moat, and the Chat. If you're currently a subscriber, that's awesome. Throw those emotes in. Let the people know. Uh, becoming a subscriber is the, one of the easiest ways to support what I do, either through paying here $5 a month or using your Twitch Prime token, your Prime Gaming token, because you have Amazon Prime, you link it with your Twitch, then you become a subscriber. Uh, if you have been gifted a sub, oh, that's awesome. Cool for you, right? Um, consider converting that into a regular sub. That would be rad. Um, and gifting subs is a great way to support the channel. I appreciate everyone who has done that. Uh, Bits and coins, also super appreciated. Uh, the, the just lovely, and I, I thank you very much. We this will be a couple minutes, and then we're gonna get back to building, finish up this kit, and start the enterprise kit. Um, uh, Bobby, I mentioned it, and then he does it. That's so generous. Thank you so much, Bobby. I'll read everybody's names in a second. Um, please enjoy your subs. Uh, uh, 
giving out now five subs, making it 47 total in lifetime. Uh, welcome to uh, uh, Kumahara. Uh, what's up, Ian? Uh, uh, Roxy Chu, Nathan Explosion, uh, a legible nerd, and Fox Renard. You are now all subscribers. Welcome uh, or returning gifted subs to the Build with Bear Workshop. Uh, I appreciate you being here, and I appreciate those gifted subs. Thank you so much, Bobby. You're a gem. Um, yeah, Nathan Explosion. Indeed, Nathan. I think we saw Nathan on Wednesday, which was nice. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, uh, gifting subs, great way to support what I do. Also, uh, uh, bits and coins, also always appreciated, getting me just closer to being able to continue to do stuff, getting those payouts every month, which I use to buy model kits. Now, an alternative, and we're, we're almost at March 1st, because when we hit March 1st, that's the best time to do this. I have a Patreon, and March 1st is the best time to join the Patreon, because you get the full month. Patreon.com slash, uh, uh, Patreon.com slash Pat Bear. Uh, $1, $3, $5, $10, way easier, uh, way more range than this. Also, I should again mention YouTube.com slash Pat Bear. Uh, subscribe there, which is free, or join, which is a new thing you can do, and you'll get a video one day early there, $2 a month. It's just another thing. And also, honestly, getting my YouTube lined up where Google Pay payouts that way hits my monetization will mean that I might get my next payout sooner than later because y y there's a $100 threshold for Google uh, uh, for YouTube, and I'm so close to getting that next payout. I'm dollars away, which could happen at any time. So I don't know. I don't know when I cut the cut that it's going to be whatever, but it's another alternative, uh, as I said, because who knows when any of this will just go away. Oh, I do have, uh, I do have my YouTube. Oh, I should put that. I just have to update the text for YouTube to say subscribe and consider joining. Um, Let's see. Uh, speaking of, of, of money, anything I make through Patreon, through YouTube, through Twitch, goes into buying model kits. Also, I have direct donations. They're listed right there if you want to do a one-time donation. Um, uh, but yeah, everything goes back into buying kits because once I'm done with a kit, I'm done with the kit. Uh, you know, I could do some kit bashing, but I'm not super into it. So it really only exists in the moment. And then it, some of them that are cool go on my shelf. This one won't because I don't want to stand it up on it. Um... Uh, so yeah, that is, uh, uh, I have an Amazon wish list. The next kit, the enterprise I, I'm going to be building was bought from my Amazon wish list and sent to me. So it's jumping in the queue. Thank you to air, uh, for, for buying that. Um, and yeah, I've got some Lego sets, some nano blocks, some, uh, entry grades. I put a new entry grade, a common rider entry grade. I've done one common rider. I wouldn't mind doing this one cause it looks pretty cool. Um, uh, an Ultraman entry grade, uh, uh, all kinds of different stuff. Pokemon model kits, Lego sets, high grades, master grades. I put the Enterprise D in there, which is the same uh, Polar Lights kit, just because why not? Uh, or is that the AMT kit? Yeah, it's the AMT Star Trek USS Enterprise D, because uh, why not? Uh, ooh, that jumped in price. Why did that Reborn's high grade jump to $41? That's nonsense. That's too expensive. I'm going to move that down the list. But yeah, I got all kinds of different kits I would love to build. Uh, and uh, some of them are very expensive and some of them are not that expensive. Uh, and yeah, you buy something there. As I said, it jumps the queue. Alternatively, and it's more work, you could buy a gift card to USA Gundam Store. And I'll and then you just have to send me the code in a DM on Twitter. Um, and we will get back to building in just a moment or two. I just have to read through a few more of my ad break. I do this every stream. We'll get back to building. Uh, some links I would like you to check out. Uh, the Personal History of Games podcast. My buddy Eric, this is the last time I mentioned this uh, this week, but it's about DDR. Uh, he plays DDR while we talk about it. There's a video version of the podcast. There's an audio version of the podcast. It's very fun. You should check that out. Uh, put a link to the link tree for that. Bear With Me is a video series where I uh, watch stuff for the first time. It's a reaction video series. I am reacting uh, to a very good dog named Maple, and you should just check that shit out. Uh, I got another animal one I'm doing next week because 
people seem to respond very well to the animal one, so I'm going to do another react to an animal. Also, someone sent it to me, and I was like, yes. Um, and luckily, I got content ID on, on an upcoming one, so I won't make any money off of it, but that's okay. Uh, because it's really good, so I'll go with that. They didn't block it, at least. Sometimes people block, and I'm like, oh, please don't block. I just want to share. Uh, oh, I forgot. I'll do this next. Uh, so uh, on Monday, I'll have a new uh, episode of uh, Pepper's Anime Club coming out. But uh, this last one I did uh, was about where to start with Gundam and where to start with Gunpla. And Mondays, I'll tell you right now, folks, the one that's coming out on Monday, and people who do $5 or $10 patron, uh, uh, levels on Patreon uh, get to see it tomorrow is about my favorite anime from the 80s which I didn't watch in the 80s but I watched in the 90s um, does he play DR with his legs uh, the whole podcast or do he play Step Mania like with his hands he plays Step Mania on a DDR pad. He's got a metal DDR pad and did it for the entire length of the podcast, which is impressive and apparently hurt him a little bit by, by the end of it. But yeah, Eric did a great job of just going with it. There'll be a lot of like him asking an open-ended question and hoping I would talk for a while so he could catch his breath, which I appreciated. Uh, but yeah, this Pat Bears Anime Club, is, uh, there'll be a new one out next week. Um, oh, I didn't say that I have a Discord, and you should join my Discord. Sorry, I forgot to mention the Discord. It's free. That's a free thing. We're going to get back to building in just a moment. Because, uh, yeah, I just want to plug my Discord. It's free. You should join that. I'm going to drink a little water here. Pop this out. All right, we're going to build swords and then and a shield. And I'm also going to talk about some anime that I've been watching for the past couple of days. So let's get that ready. Uh, not as much stuff as I normally do. Uh, I'm on a break from um, uh, for uh, Horamiya because it's getting real. And I'm just going to take my time with it. I didn't finish last week's episode, so I'm going to just cool out on that. But I did watch Anime Capybara-san, which I neglected to watch on Thursday because I got busy right before the stream started. So I didn't watch that. So I made sure to watch it so that I could talk about it with all y'all. Um, I mean, it's it's like a minute and a half episode, or less than that. It's a show for children, but I'll tell you. Uh, the Cappies, the Capybaras, are eating good autumn foods, and we see the caretaker, who we haven't seen in a while, and he's going to roast up some veggies for the Capybara. And it was just cute and lovely. That show is just good vibes and good energy, it is definitely a show for children, but I do not care because it is cute and features lots of cool animals on a safari. Hanging out, like a sanctuary, I should say. Hanging out, just having a good time. And I had forgotten about the caretaker character, so it was cool that he returned, even for just one episode. That's it. Uh, I'm going to jump to With a Dog and a Cat Every Day is Fun because it's short, because the other two are like long conversations so we'll just do the quick one which is uh the owner's previous dog uh, uh you know when she was young had puppies but she was still a very loyal dog to uh the owner and then uh the owner's mom is the only human that both the dog and cat respect and fear and it was just kind of fun to just see the cat like this cat that seems to have no issues uh actually be scared of uh are the owner's mom, and that was just kind of cute. But yeah, short, sweet. I really like that show. It's a good time. Check it out if you haven't. Uh, this sword is just one piece, which is a little bit of a bummer, but we're just going to hit it with some, um, some black to like make some of the shine. We'll just hit that there, and then we'll hit the eraser with it. Just to kind of brighten it together, to brighten it up a little bit, uh, and make sure that you know, it kind of pops. But this sword does clip into this other piece making it it like a hammer sword basically which i like the concept of uh i thought it was gundam not one piece ha 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 uh you got me nailed um okay now i'm gonna get into the two shows that had like a lot of shit happening in them so i if hmm so i'm a spider so what uh, I made a joke about this last week, and it continues. When we were talking about, when we were dealing with the other characters who were isekai, because it's a whole class that was isekai, not just our main character. When our whole class is isekai, 
Um, I'm constantly thinking, when can we go back to the spider? I did the thing, I did a tweet about it where I had uh, the uh, Jonah Jameson like pounding the desk because like pictures of Spider Man. Where's the spider? I'm here for the spider. Uh, which is my true feeling. I do not care about these humans and their problems. Well, I found a new thing that I don't care about even more, which is a flashback to when they weren't even isekai, pre isekai. Uh, I do not care about that at all. Uh, although there was a character who they spent a lot of time talking about who, as far as I can tell, we haven't met yet. So she's either a character who died or a character who, like, there are a couple characters they haven't run into. And I was like, well, she must be important because we haven't seen her yet. So I don't know. I don't, but I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, we also see the character who becomes the spider. Uh, and that is kind of interesting. And we don't know what happened. They all died and were resurrected and reborn in this fantasy world. Uh, so, yeah. Uh there's, yeah, there's the flashback. Uh, yeah, we meet uh, Negashi, who is a creepy weirdo, but we haven't met her in this life, I don't think. But yeah, a couple characters did die, so I don't know. Maybe she's one of them. But why would they spend time on her if she dies? Uh, so I assume that she is just one we haven't run into yet. Uh, so yeah, that was long and I didn't like that. Okay, and then we see our spider uh, and... Uh, uh, so our spider is having her brain rocked by the fact that she there's something called an administrator and that this is like a video game. And she's kind of just been like, okay, okay. But she's now starting to realize like, hey, what the fuck does this mean? What is this world? What what have, what have I gotten myself into? Uh, and she eventually is just like, whatever, I'll figure it out later. It doesn't change the fact that I've got to get stronger and get out of here. Um, and then she literally, her brain almost melts the fact that she almost dies. Uh, but she has preser perseverance. She can turn MP into HP and she now knows how that works, which is great. Um, also we find out that her newly upgraded ability that she requests, she made the request for wisdom. Uh, she can now search terms. So if she doesn't know how to do a thing, she can learn it. So she's going to learn more about magic. Um, and luckily for her, she powers up her magic enough, or proficiency enough, with Parallel Mind that she now has a third mind, which is going to focus on magic. Uh, so now she has a body mind, a strategy mind, like dealing with, with conflicts and, and thinking ahead, and a mind that focuses on casting magic. And, and researching magic. So she now has a bunch of different brains in her brains. Uh, this does not really stay in well. This is supposed to snap in. And it definitely doesn't. Yeah, this... This is... This is shitty. Uh, yeah, wow. Wow. This thing towards right at the end... Really disappointing. And we'll put the sword on. And we'll get the shorts. We got to do the short swords as well. But yeah. This is a little disappointing. Anyway. Uh, also, hey. Turns out there was a fire dragon nearby. And that fire dragon got into a fight. Looks like with something else. And is damaged. But is still way outclasses our spider. Uh, and I'll say, this is one of the best fights we've had so far of our spider just, like, in a bad way, trying to figure shit out, trying to uh, not die to this dragon. Uh, spider fights back and is doing well. Magic to, manages to add uh, poison magic to her poison abilities. And also, a new mind shows up, but they tell her, like, hey, be quiet. We don't know what that mind is going to focus on, but she does get a fourth mind. Uh... And, but unfortunately that dragon burns the, uh, burns up the poison. And, uh, our spider is definitely in trouble. It's probably going to die. Maybe might die at this. We don't know. Um, all right. So let's, let's clip out, let's do our shield and then we'll clip out our swords. Cause 
Where's our shield? Wait. Hmm. Why didn't I? Oh, there it is. It's right down here at the bottom of the page. Because we got one more sticker. So let's just get our shield out. I already did. This is why I did some panel line testing on this. So we'll do that. Um, anyway, uh, post credits tag is the elf teacher saying that uh, uh, Okabe is dead. And I thought and that is who we were led, led to believe was the spider because she's the loner girl. So I think the anime is trying to make us wonder if it's the... Because there's the loner girl who got picked on and bullied. And then there's also the weird girl that uh, that people avoided. And I think the anime is trying to be like, which one is this one? Uh, but also, I realize now, here's my big thing. Here's my big, I've got a second parallel mind that's focusing on figuring out this world. What if, What? why am I believing right now that the anime is running in parallel time. That the spider's adventures is at the same rate. This could be in the past. Like, all the stuff we're seeing with the spider could be in the past uh, of the, the present of these characters interacting. For all we know, like, this could have been decided a long time ago and she's way stronger uh, when they meet. There's no rule that says that this is happening that as these human characters are, are doing stuff, that she, the spider is doing their thing. And, I, and that, when I realized that, I was like, oh, yeah, why do I think that? Just be, like, so I don't know. Also, uh, I just realized that, that f since the, the very first episode, the very first episode, the closing theme has been um, the spider and a couple other spiders, all as members of a band. And those are her different brains. And I didn't even realize that once another brain had showed up. Not until uh, one showed up that was wearing a uh, witch's hat because she is the magic-focused one that I realized that, oh, those are the different brains that she has. They're not different spiders that look like they were a D&D &D party. And I was like, oh, I'm dumb. I didn't realize that. Okay. Uh, but overall, it is pretty okay. Uh, again, I care about the spider more than I care about the humans. I do not care about the humans. I know that tragedy is about to fall them even more, and I could not give a shit. Uh, I just care about my spider. I just care about the spider and her and her times, good and bad. All right, so we're putting the shield on, and now let's be, build some sh short swords and put those short swords on uh, the various locations on this kit, and I will show you how this thing holds swords. Uh, I'm not even going to panel line these. I'm just going to put them on. They don't really need it because they're gray. Uh, okay. This is uh, uh, Jesus Kaizen. I'll talk about Jesus Kaizen. Uh, this show won Best Anime in 2020. I think that the best episodes of the show have been out this year and not last year. And uh, the best episodes would not have been eligible. Uh, but it's still a really great show, and I recommend it if you like your shonen that doesn't mind to get pretty fucking dark, because there's some definite darkness in the show. It starts off feeling a lot like Bleach, but then just gets real serious pretty damn fast, and I think that's awesome. Um, all right, so we're going to put a sword like that, and then this pops out like this, and then this comes out, and then... This holds a sword this way. These at least hold swords well. And then that goes in like that. Yep, great. So, okay, so that that's that's one sword. And just kind of do it like that so that I can... Uh, you can also uh, pop these in like this so that they hold them. Uh, and that stores the swords, which is a good good call. But yeah, we'll just do this. Um, what was going to say? Anyway, this fucking fight was dope as hell. Just as Kaisen. This episode of Just as Kaisen was awesome. Uh, it felt a little... Like it, I, I will say, it felt a little anticlimactic by the end of it. Uh, I am uh, a bit bummed. 
uh, by the end of this fight. So that's a shame. But I think all of it looked pretty cool. We get a flashback of Toto. So we get a little information about our boy Toto and his whole deal. Uh, and apparently, like, a lot of his personality comes, like, of his, like, asking, like, what, what do you like in a woman? Uh, comes from him meeting the woman that trained him to be a sorcerer. So that was cool. We briefly met a dude. Literally, we met a dude for like five minutes. Uh, because we saw the guy who um, wants to cut people up. We, we met the butcher, the evil sorcerer who's a butcher. But there's also another evil sorcerer. Uh, he is a, a young looking dude with pale skin. And he has a blonde ponytail, but it's a side ponytail, which is, an, which is a look for a dude. Uh, I'll give him that. It is a look. Uh, but he shows up, and he's going to cut some people. Uh, but then he runs away because uh, uh, Gojo breaks the seal uh, that was keeping him out. Uh, and, yeah, one guy runs away. You can't find him. He throws a huge blast at, at Hanami. Um, and, oh, I forgot. Yuji, Yuji does uh, Black Flash a bunch, which is apparently... He, like, breaks the record of people using that move, uh, which is awesome. He's really gotten stronger. And Gojo notices, like, oh, my boy got way stronger. Cool. Toto was a good matchup for him, um, which he was. Uh, oh, and then the butcher guy that wants to make people into coat racks, he, he came along specifically because he wants to kill Gojo and turn him into a coat rack, which is fucked, just a fucked up thing that I just said. Uh, that dude gets fucking demolished immediately. His arms, all f both arms and both legs get completely crushed. And he's only not murdered because they want to pump him for information. Uh, but he just gets fucking wrecked. Uh, and then Hanami is maybe dead, but probably got away because we didn't watch her die. So she probably is fine or just hurt. Uh, and also... Uh, uh, Mahito, uh, the, the cursed spirit that killed Yuji's friend, uh, has one of, uh, one of the fingers and definitely killed some no-named employees of the school. Uh, but yeah, the action was definitely awesome. I would have liked to have seen Toto and, uh, Yuji defeat Tanami. Uh, I think that's kind of a bummer that we didn't get to see that. Uh, but... Gojo just taking out that butcher was, like, fucking incredible. Also, I hate the old man principal, but he did play... His ability is him turning sound that he produces as he becomes his own amplifier, turns into the cursed energy, and, show, and blasts it at people. And he does that by playing wicked electric guitar. And, hey, even if I hate the old man because he wanted to kill the character we like, I gotta respect an old man playing wicked guitar solos as a thing in an anime. If me telling you that there's a can uh, character in the show named Panda, who is a panda that talks and sometimes and one time became a gorilla, if that was not enough to get you on board, maybe the fact that an old man wails on electric guitar as an attack will push you over the edge to check out Jujutsu Kaisen. Because like, I think that, like, it is a show about cool shit happening. Uh, it is a Dan Record ask, ass anime, and I think you would like it. Uh, and it's got some silliness and some fun shit. Oh, also, Toto uses his cool ability of, like, switching people and places around. He also uses a we he uses that weapon, a cursed weapon. Uh, uh, and... He is a nonsense character who ends up turning out to be pretty fucking uh, clutch. All right. Our kit is done here. Look at all these swords. So many swords and so many sub arms that don't want to work, that don't want to look good and stay on. Uh, I don't recommend this kit. I think it looks great and it's going to photograph well. But there's even with a stand, this thing is going to fall apart. I'm, I, I would have to. I would definitely 100% have to glue this kit to get it to be anything resembling good. So I'm going to take a photo of it, and then we're going to say goodbye to this kit forever. 
and I'll probably, I'll only think about fondly of the sub arms, but everything else on this kit, I am disappointed in. So let me get my photo ready here. I have to zoom out so much to get all these arms. So let's do a zoomed out photo and then we'll do a close up photo. Okay. So yeah, that's the anime I've been watching. Let's get into the, the Enterprise. Uh, this th yeah, this <laughs> literally this thing is just falling apart. I do not recommend it. Uh, the Hajiroboshi, I recommend more. It's the same, basically the same kit with less cool shit on it, but it's a better kit. Uh, it didn't fall apart in my hands. And it, I'll say this. Hey, yes, indeed. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, but we got we got our decals, so we can make this a bunch of different things. We'll talk about this a little bit as we get into it. We'll take a look at some of these parts. Let's go over here to the Enterprise. There's the Enterprise. Um, we will not be painting this, uh, but yeah, this was bought, bought on my wish list uh, uh, by Air, and thank you very much for that. Um, we won't be painting this. Does this want paint? Yes, this very much wants paint, but we will be doing a lot of water transfers, uh, so don't worry about that. We do have our uh, our bay, our stand here, so we'll get it going there. Your stand it does come with this stand. Uh, I have some pe seen some people, so I will say this: if you're somebody who is looking to pick up on these kits and you like painting kits, uh, a cool thing that this offers is that you can. Uh, what some people do, which I think is rad, is they paint, and of course you're seeing the ring light. They paint this to look kind of like stars, or maybe like. Uh, you know, so it looks like space, and I think that's cool. And some people paint this uh, metal piece as well, so that's rad, and I would recommend that if that's something you're looking for. Now, uh, a thing I don't love about uh, Polar Lights kits is they just number everything, and they don't do like A one through six. They just do like one, and then till thirty-five or whatever. Uh, and I don't like that. I never have. Uh, so I do have to, because it is sometimes hard to read the numbers on this. So you kind of have to like really hope that you found the thing you need. These are 17 and 18. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, so this kit allows you to build uh, the Enterprise NX-1. But we can also, if we wanted to, build uh, the, uh, the refit, which is a fictional thing. I mean... Uh, fictional that's the wrong term because this is all fiction the refit was a proposed uh redesign for the enterprise for season five which didn't happen so there's a bunch of refit stuff in here and so every step is like do this but also hey what about doing the refit you could do the refit if you want to do the refit um if you're going to do the refit you want to do it this way if you're not going to do the refit you want to do it that way and it's like okay i get that um so we're not doing any of the refit parts and then when we do uh colors and stuff or we're not gonna do the paint but there is the we could do the iss version we could do that um there basically are our decals here allow us a lot oh, oh neat i had no idea they even thought about season five so apparently they did and they were planning to do a refit like um a, some of these parts here won't, we won't be using at all which you can see i did some panel lining on here just to kind of test out if i wanted to do any of that um, cause I've been thinking about hitting all of this with a marker before I put any of the stickers down over it, just so anything that I don't put any water slides on, it would still pop. So I'm still debating that. I think I might do that, but I tested some of that here cause I'm just going to use black on it. Uh, because some of these components we won't be using. Um, yeah, so we can make this the enterprise, the ISS enterprise, the ISS Avenger. Uh, we could put these cool decals on there if we want to do the uh i forget what we wanted to do this but yeah so there's a bunch of different we got a bunch of different options uh but yeah you can see so there's the nx01 here which is what we're going to be built we could also do the refit which has this little like component down here but we're not going to worry about that um so yeah we're gonna uh we're gonna dive in here um Basically, the next, you know, 30 minutes, we're going to get a lot of this assembled. I don't know if we're going to get into water slides. If not, we'll do that all on Monday. 
um, but we'll at least get some of this together here. Uh, all right, so we're going to do this section. So we're just looking to see which one we're doing. We're doing uh, this one here, right? Yeah, no, okay. So yes, this one here. So we're going to do this step one, this part of step one and putting all of these here and then yeah and then i think we we might hit some panel lines uh and i crossed off the refit stuff because i don't want to screw up and then um all right so knowing what these numbers are will help when i can learn when i learn them but i'm gonna won't know them right away this is eight through four five seven eight nine ten 13, so kind of just find the pieces I need and place them where I need them. Uh, we'll start here, and I'm literally, because this is just like, here's this piece and here's everything and it goes, I'm going to be crossing things off as we place them um, so that I can figure out where these components need to go. Uh, and I think that's going to be my best bet. So we'll start with 20. So I got to find number 20 and place number 20 where it goes. Uh, none of these are numbered. They're numbered on this side. Uh, also, these are hard to read in this lighting, which is fun. Um, yeah, this, this feels like a lot of this feels like um, more uh, like, uh, what do you call it? Um, more like a car kit, even though it is snap, uh, that it feels like a uh, like a Bandai, like a gun plug kit. So this is going to go in here. All right, that one in there. Great. That doesn't feel good. Uh, okay, so that one, we're done with that. Uh, and we've got little pieces here little plastic pieces they're going to go uh, underneath so you can see some of this is actually numbered like here's 101 and 101 so that's actually numbered where they go because we won't see them they'll just be they're going to pop up so let's do let's try that i think these are going to be our clear pieces here um now these some people would spray these you know spray paint these uh we won't be doing that as i said there won't be any paint but uh, I could see why that would look great. Uh, 103, 10. Ooh, these are hard to read. 111. That's 111. Or any 101. 10. Okay, not those, not those. These are. Twenty-three, twenty-four, oh, twenty-one. Need that. Uh, one hundred three and one hundred one. So when I find one hundred one and I find one hundred three, I'll know where those go. Twenty-one, I can do now. I know where twenty was, so I should be able to find that. But yeah, this is not. This is not the easiest thing. This is like an odd transition from the previous stuff that, that I... Working from, uh, like I said, jumping from one style of kit to another is just like a different philosophy on how any of this works. Uh, I've never put one of these Star Trek model kits together, but always wondered how it would go. Thrilled you had it on the Amazon wish list. These pocket colors look incredibly hard to read against. They are. I mean, I, I'm put, I have to put them here underneath the light. Like, I have my overhead light. This is the only way I can really read them. Um, because, like, look, if there was a chart here that told me what each, like, like that showed the, the spruces, I would just use that. But we don't have that. Uh, so I have to basically, like, put everything underneath this light to closely read everything. All right, so none of this is what I want. Um, this might be some numbers that I want. Yes, 21 is the thing that I want. 
Let's put that there. Pull that off. 21 is a thing that I want to put on, which is goes over here. So we'll put 21 in. Honestly, like, uh, you know, putting the kit together isn't going to be a lot. It's going to be um, doing all the panel lining and then putting on all the water slides. Like, the actual assembly isn't going to be super complicated. So now I need, oh, so I can cross off 21. I did 21. I did 20. Uh, 20, 228 I need to do, uh, which goes in here. So I need 228, 101, and 103. So those are the numbers I'm looking for. Uh, these are 109, and those are one. Oh, here we go. 101 is over here. I got some 101s. So let's get those out. Let's see, 101s. Let's see if I can do this without breaking them. There's a 101, and there's a 101, and these go from the bottom up, taller side there, and they are going to go in the bottom here. You can see they're actually, well, you probably can't see that, but they're numbered on the inside because the inside won't show, which is nice. Also, the inside has fucking, like, information there like copyright information of like or like where it was made which is an odd choice all right maybe the tweezers well no so i've always said this like tiny pieces tweezers make sense but then also tweezers can shoot the tiny piece far away and then you'll never find it again so sometimes you just have to hope you can get your big fingers to do the job and it is tough uh Yeah, because this just has to like go in here on the bottom on both these sides, uh, and then they'll pop up. Whew. Holy shit! This does not want to go in. So it goes like that, and then looks like the thicker piece is in the front. Wow. <laughs> uh, hard to talk while I'm doing this, so I apologize. But, uh, hmm. All right, I'm going to get my tweezers out, and we'll just see. We'll just hope we don't lose this piece as we go to put it in. I'm just going to do it like this. So instead of hitting it from the side, I'm going to just kind of try to use my tweezers to lay it, to get it in place and then use my finger to push it in. But yeah, these do not want to go in. Easy. These are going to put up a fight. And then I just can't find it on the table. Woo, all right. Well, I might do these at the start. Oh, one went in. Wait, I just, one went in. There's no way this is going to show up on camera, but one of them went in, and I'm very happy. You can maybe see the backside of it, it went in there. Now, the other one is somewhere on the table. Oh, it's over here. Okay. I got one of them in. Just as I said, well, maybe I'll do this one, you know, on Monday. Uh, we'll start with these pieces, and I'll just move on, but... I also am really afraid that if I, like, even if I put this in a box, that it would be gone forever on two, uh, by the time we get to Monday. Like, even if I put this back in the box, I'd really be afraid that these things would just disappear. Uh, they seem to be wedged in really well once they're in, so hopefully they're not going to fall back out, but we'll find out. If they do, I'll try to get them back in and then just put some, uh, liquid cement on there. I'm going to have to get out my liquid cement just in case any of this is wonky and wobbly and doesn't want to stay in and snap in. Or if I bust something up, I'll have to get some liquid cement. 
to make sure that it all works. But I have I have liquid cement. Uh, I wouldn't blame you if you just if if this got shelved. It's more filled than I imagined. Yeah, I mean like. There we go. We got it. In. No, the thing is, once this all comes together, it's going to look rad. It's just it's it's got a lot of tiny pieces. All right. The other side went in. I'm I am. Look, we're going to get more of this done. Don't worry. But I am just happy that I got this far with it. All right. So we got those two done. So we now need uh, two. OK, so we got to do that. Where does that go? What is that? Oh, no. This is piece two. This is piece two. That's what it is. This is two. It's pointing at this kit. We need 228 and then 103 goes on these two. So let's see. That one was 101. So is this 103? Yes. Got two one oh three. There are three one oh two one oh threes have to go in here. So let's get these out. These are very small. Slowly remove them. Place them on the table. Slowly remove them off the sheet. Place them on the table. I'm gonna breathe. Now these just have to go in through the top here. And I am doing very small pieces. This is very delicate work. Oops. When in doubt, jump to the other one. We only have these and then 228 we have to find. I know these clear pieces don't read, but... Get in there. Nope. Oof. All right. I'm going to put these aside for a second. Let's try to get 228 in just to finish that up. What numbers are these? None of these are 228. So I'll put that aside. This is... None of these are 228. Or is it 22B? Is that an 8 or a B? Well, we'll see if I can find 228. If not, I'll then go and look at 20, 22B, which would be annoying if that was also what it was. Yep, it's 22B. I found it. Or it's 228. It's 22B. It is 22B because it's right here. Because there's 22 and then there's 22B. Why would they call that that? Just call it another number. So that's, that's another thing I don't like about this kit is... To me, that's not gonna, you're not going to read that. You can't see that. You can't see it. Just know that that looked like 228 and not 22B. That's going to go in here. And that's actually going to be easy because that's a big piece. There it is. We did it. Cross that off. All right. Now we got these tiny little friends that have to go in here. And this is going to be the rest of the goddamn stream. Uh... Okay. Got an email, but I am working right now. Person who emailed me. I got stuff going on. I'm putting tiny pieces into a Enterprise NX01. One of the only one of the only Star Trek shows I have not watched all of. I watched some of it. I didn't really like it at first. Enterprise. It took me a little while. I warmed up, but I never finished it. So I, I haven't finished it. I'm sure on Monday we'll have uh, some Harold thoughts because Harold is most likely Harold gave us a host, but I'm sure that he is watching uh, Loading Ready Run, doing Loading Ready Live tonight. Their monthly live show, variety show. Uh, I'm sure he is there watching that. But I'm sure he has. I know he has enter Enterprise thoughts. Enterprise definitely takes some time and has lots of mis misfires. Yeah. Uh, can you drop that Amazon wish list again when you get a chance? I definitely can. Uh, 
I always heard it got better in the later seasons they were going to run into it. Same thing with me, yeah. Uh, so, uh, this is my Amazon wish list. It has uh, model kits and Lego sets and mega, mega, or not mega blocks, uh, nano block kits. Ooh, I got one in. I got one in. One of these is in. Oh, sorry. And it also has a uh, uh, wish list has, I put the Enterprise D up there, I believe. Okay, so where did that tiny one go? <laughs> oh, fuck. There's one other one, and it definitely had it in my hand, and then it fell, and I have no idea where it went. Uh, I get to hopefully find the other 103, because there are, because I'm taking the other 103 off of this, which I'm sure is not an extra, because I bet this kit doesn't have extras. So, because I believe that says, yeah, that's 103 right there, yeah. So we're going to take the other one. And then hopefully I'll find that one I just dropped. But whatever. If I don't, I don't. You're never going to see these clear pieces. Uh, season 4 is actually really good. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I just never got around to it. Uh, Alright, I snipped that off. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to try to get this in. And then we'll be at least be done with one section of, the, of this haul. And then... The other uh, part of this is, oops, um, the other part if we have to do is we'll do the bottom. That's going to have a lot of the ring, and then but we'll get some of this uh, set up, and then hopefully I will find the other 103 because that might not have been an extra. You never know. It could have been. But also, if it isn't, it isn't. It's okay. I'm not going to feel bad about it. And then on Monday, I'll have, like, a lot more concentration because it'll be the start of the stream, which is always good for my brain. Like doing intricate things at the end of a stream is, is a little rough for me. Yeah, this is just the tiniest goddamn thing. <laughs> All right. Try to get this in. Um, have you made any of your search? So, yes, I did the um, the Defiant. That was the first kit I've ever done of this type. Uh, uh, yeah, and uh, it was really fun. Um to do the Defiant. Uh, um, that needed some paint, which we didn't do, but it still looked really good. Uh, are there any anime that are similar to Star Trek? I've never seen Legend of Galactic Heroes. Is that close at all? Hmm, so, Legend of Galactic Heroes, I, I don't, I'm not a super huge on, but like, not really. Like, they're, they're like space things, but uh, defines the ship totally. Uh, yeah, it's more political intrigue than like action adventure. But like, Captain uh 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 or Haddock is that? Yeah, like that kind of stuff is like there's some space, like there's some space adventure stuff that kind of fits. But it's not. It's definitely not the same thing. All right. Well, that. All right. Well, we're definitely. I don't know where those tiny pieces. That tiny piece just rolled away. Oh, here we go. Here's one. Hopefully the other one turns up. Oh, I did. I found the other one. All right. So I'm going to try to get one of these two in here. The last couple minutes of the stream. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of like space epic stuff that is that has that is more like this shit. I mean, like Macross is, you know, I mean, Mac Macross is Battlestar Galactica in more ways than it's Star Trek, um, you know, a.k.a. Robotech. But I think that that that's probably the closest thing I can think of off the top of my head anime that is like that is like Star Trek uh, damn this is a tiny piece I'm going to put one in this box 
in case we need it for something else. It wasn't just an extra. We'll try to get this tiny piece into here. Just get the fuck in there. And it's got to go in from the top. Can't go in from the bottom. All right. Well, I am not going to get this tonight. So I'll get a little. I'm going to put it in the box. Should, should be okay for two days. We'll get a little bit of the bottom done here. Let me at least get like. Uh, so we did this one. I'm going to circle this one so that I go back and do it. Let me at least get like one put in here, like 102, which is clear. Uh, one, two, 11, 100, five. I thought it was a clear piece. Maybe I'm wrong. 102. 111, 111, 102 is this piece here. Yeah. Uh, did Astro Lost in Space get an anime? I thought it was a fairly fun space adventure. Uh, I do not know the answer to that. Uh, how does this get to be silver? Silver than what you have right now. Uh, Lord Crashington, uh, spray paint, which so it won't get any silver for us. Uh, this is uh, Polar Lights uh, is of the type of model kit company where they make things that are not ready to display. Um, so uh, I would have to hit this with spray paints and some variants and some masking uh, and some grading. Uh, it is not something I'm capable at this time of doing, nor is it something that I have a super interest in doing. I don't have spray paints or, uh, or, uh, or paint guns or anything like that. So, uh, but that, that it wants that. Uh, what I will do is I will hit this with panel. I will panel this with black all throughout on both sides before we put the decals on because we have a lot of decals. The decals are going to make it look good. It's never going to look as good as it wants to look because I'm never going to be able to recreate that uh, without paint, which I do not have the facilities or honestly the interest in doing. Like I could get it together. I just off stream. I can't, I certainly can't do it on stream, but I could do it off stream if I really wanted to. I don't want to. So, all right, let me get this one piece in here. Come on. One of the other annoying things about these polar lights kits is um, everybody who makes YouTube content about these kits is, is, a dude, oh, like literally every single person that I have seen. Now, I could dig deeper, but the the easy to find YouTubers who do this stuff um, are older than me. They could have sprung for gray plastic. Uh, the Defiant wasn't. No, the Defiant is is a lighter color. It, this is like a beige. That was like white. Uh, yeah, it, it, it was a bummer. No, everybody that does content on uh, on this stuff is older than me and definitely has been doing model kits for like 30 years. So no one talks about anything that's wrong with the kits. They're just like, and I did this and I did that. And here's the results. And then I sprayed it. And here is the technique I'm working on, you know, with my air gun that I've been working on for 25 years. And it's just like, nobody is like, hey, I'm new to model kits. I like Star Trek. Here we go which is frustrating for somebody who's like, I don't, what are the things that are wrong with this kit? What are the tips and tricks? And they were like, there were none. There were none to give me. All right. So we did that. Is there any last? No, we're done for this. Uh, we will have a lot more to build with this kit because we can't snap this together until we do all of the ring of uh, the pieces and we'll do that. Uh, and I'll also try to get this off screen. I'm going to get this in because I'll like be fresh of mind at some point, And this won't be a nightmare, but we'll take a photo. We're barely gotten this started, uh, but we at least have an idea of what we need to do. So I can take a photo of that. Now uh, we are going to go and raid because that is what we do on these streams. We go and give a raid to somebody else uh, who, uh, 
you know, isn't necessarily a model kit builder, but they're just cool people with cool communities because that is a thing that I am always looking for uh, is cool folks. Uh, and so that we continue the fun, the fun tonight. Thank you, everybody who's here tonight. Really appreciate it. Uh, so again, on Monday, I'll be back streaming. We will finish, the, we will most likely finish this build or get very close to it and start the, uh, um, so yeah, we'll, we'll get through assembly and then we'll start uh, adding uh, some marker work to it and then we'll add uh, some decals, uh, water transfer slides, I should say. But we are going to see somebody cool the raid and give them some love out here on a Saturday night. Uh, see who's doing what and out there and doing what. Bobby, uh, uh, with 100 bits, thanks for the stream. Well, thank you, and I appreciate that very much. Um, let's see. Uh, who was doing stuff out here? Well, we haven't raided. Uh, well, yeah. Dave Lang is playing Hitman 3. I'm going to see when Dave started because I like, you know, I don't, I don't know how long he's going to stream. But we haven't raided Mr. Lang in quite some time. Uh, oh, he started 16 minutes ago. Great. So we are going to go raid Dave motherfucking Lang, uh, Joseph J. Brony. Uh, so feel free to come along in this raid. I hope you have a great rest of your night. Uh, he started, yeah, 20 ago. Um, yeah, thank you all so much here. Yeah, we're going to the Lang Zone, everybody. Dave's playing Hitman 3, which should be very fun. But yeah, we're going to the Lang Zone. It's been a hot minute. So thanks, everybody, for being here. I hope you have a great rest of your evening. Come along on a fun raid. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, again, don't recommend that high grade that I built. The uh, uh, Yeah, not great, but I'm excited for the next thing. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, if I had better lighting, I'd be streaming this light. Yes. Have a great night, everybody. I'll see you in the next Build with Bear. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.